Hello, everybody, and welcome to Purgatory Ironworks. I am your host, Trent Ty. And check out that intro. Man, I'm getting good at this thing. So today, man, we are building on our last video where I showed you how to make a punch out of mild steel. Now, again, it worked, worked pretty darn good, but it didn't last. Even with one use, it starts deforming and we have to dress it. That gets to be a pain in the butt. But the only way to solve that is to either make your punch out of a different material, and sometimes it's hard to find a piece that's going to be the right size to make a nice hand punch. But Jay Riekert himself, the guy that taught me, had a trick, and I thought I would share this with you guys. One of the things that I've been trying to do over the past couple of videos is try to cover the bases between you guys that are doing it from scratch and having to use everything the old way to some of you guys that are starting that actually have tools from the modern age. So today, we're going to be using a modern electric welder, and we're going to be using this piece of half-inch mild steel, same stuff we made the punch out of last time, but here I have a half-inch drill bit that's bent. Well, why is it bent? because apprentices suck. That's why. However, I hung on to this piece because this particular drill bit and most of the metal cutting drill bits that you're going to encounter are made from a general group of steels known as high-speed steels. These guys are formulated specifically to resist deformation at increasing temperatures. Now, let me translate all that. That basically means is as steel gets hot, it wants to mush. This is anti-mush material because, of course, with the drill bit, as it's drilling, a tremendous amount of heat gets built up onto the bottom and if it starts to mush well your drill bit's no good so this type of material is anti-mush under heat material so this area that's been fluted can't do anything with it it's not going to be good for us but what we can do is there's a solid shank up here about an inch and a half of it so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to cut this thing off and we're going to take that piece and we're going to tip this piece of half inch mild steel with it weld it in there really good and then forge it out into our point that way instead of having a mild steel piece we have a mild steel shank but we're going to have a high speed steel tip now if you went and you tried to buy a piece of high speed steel that was enough to uh make this whole thing you probably break the bank but if you can find somebody that's got a shank and at least a half inch thickness you can actually have your very own high speed tipped uh, punch for little or nothing if you've got access to a welder. Now there's a little bit of trickery here. Now guys, I'm gonna skip over a lot of welding know-how, but in general, when you're welding mild steels versus high alloy steels and you try to put them together, there can be some issues. So we're gonna have to be a little bit careful about how we approach this. Mainly when we weld it, we're gonna have to make sure and normalize it. And that's the, that's the process of actually putting this thing in the fire, bringing the whole thing up to heat and then letting it cool in steel air. This kind of lets the grain structure uh, come out of being so shocked. When you weld something, there's something called the heat affected zone. There's such intense heat, you know, liquid metal in one area and a quarter of an inch over, it's solid. And this can do some crazy things to the grain structure of the metal. So we need to kind of homogenize that. So once we're done welding it, we're going to normalize it, clean it up, and we're going to see how it works against the same piece of one inch by quarter inch material that we tried our mild steel piece on. So let's go prep this and get to work. You can see here that I've got everything chucked up and notice that I have not cut this piece yet. That's so I could lock it down and I have an easier time of making sure everything's straight up, uh, everything's lined up and everything's clamped into place. Notice my bevels right here. Uh, so that I can make sure and get a full weld all the way around. So all I need to do now is come in and I'm going to MIG weld this. Now Jay, in his time, would have actually oxyacetylene welded. But I find that oxyacetylene welding sometimes leads to a, a much enlarged grain structure if you're not careful. So I usually prefer to use the MIG when I'm doing stuff like this. So let's uh, grab our helmet and let's fire away here. I'll tack a little bit at first, and then we'll uh, come back in and fill it in. There's one side. 
Now the great thing about this is even if you are not a welder, you can certainly find somebody that can do this and they probably won't even charge you. Now one thing I am going to make certain and do is I'm going to try to build up a little bit of that weld because I do plan to forge this and you'd like to have extra material around there as opposed to not enough because all that will hammer down. And this is going to be one of those cases where you're not worried about it being visible. I mean this isn't going to be something like a, on a finished piece. So if there's a little bit of weld showing or some spatter, who cares? This tool is for function. Okay. So now we need to cut this guy off. Uh, if you can zip wheel it, or uh, usually an abrasive wheel is a little bit better way to do this. So I'm going to lock this in the vise, uh, cut this bad boy off, and then we're going to see about uh, normalizing this guy, and then we'll start to forging. We have our piece welded up. But I'm going to stress, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this guy up and then I'm going to set it on the side of the forge and let it cool down naturally. This is to kind of correct some of the grain structure in here. This piece is going to be an impact tool, so you don't want a lot of behunkery in your piece. Now, can you get away with it? Maybe. But in this particular case, especially when you're working with alloy steels of different alloys, extremely different alloys, if you'll heat it up, set it to the side, let it normalize, and then go about your business, the chances of it having a critical failure goes down dramatically. Now this piece is just finished cooling. It's still, it's still a little warm. I'm not going to touch it. Uh, but you can see uh, everything's looking pretty good. You can see all this extra weld that I've got on here. Now, when you're getting ready to forge this down, you can grind that up and clean it up if you need to. This is pretty good right here. I'm not going to worry about it. So now I'm just going to heat this up and I'm going to forge this down into that same type of tip we did on our other one. Except this time, we're going to have a tip that's made out of high-speed steel. Now don't forget, when you're heating this guy up, remember that's now high-speed steel, an alloy steel on the tip of this piece, which means it's going to be a lot more sensitive to heat than the mild steel is. So be careful and don't burn it. Got a good heat. And I'm really just kind of going to baby this whole thing. I'm not going to go nuts on the forging. You will notice a significant difference in what the two metals feel like up under the hammer. You'll feel the mild steel give, but then it'll feel a bit like a rock when you hit this piece on that end. That's okay. That's normal. That's perfectly fine. As you're doing this work, take your time don't get aggressive the two steels are going to move at different rates when hot so if you get in there and just start smashing it you're going to break the weld apart so baby it be careful keep it at good heat don't burn it work it out slowly and smoothly and you'll be good to go Again, as soon as it gets cold, take it back to the fire. Do not work this under temperature. Now, Check this out. You can see where those two wells met. There's actually a little bit of a crack starting to form on that end of it. Probably not where the weld's breaking, but probably where the overlap is between the weld and the piece. So with it hot, I'm going to come back in and spot that again just to cinch that up just in case uh, it might be a crack. And we're going to keep working it out. Going back over those wells I just added, again, just to clean them up, and continuing to work down that tip. 
And again, this is like hitting a rock, even at this temperature. Notice how light these blows are. I'm not going crazy with it. I think we're close to the diameter that I want. So now I'm going to start rounding this up. And remember, the real roundness is going to come from the grind. So we're just trying to get close. Super light blows, making sure every, everything's overlapping, everything's nice and straight. And that's looking pretty darn good. So we've got our piece now forged out. It is now tipped. Now again, I cannot stress that the difference between the two alloys of metal can cause a lot of problems. So again, before I do any type of grinding or I use this, I'm going to bring this in, I'll put this in the fire, bring it up to a nice orange heat, set it to the side of the forge and let it cool completely down. This will help uh, fix the grain structure and will uh, save us a lot of agony down the way. Again, this is one of those situations about ask me how I know. This piece is cooling down, and so here's, the, here's a hot tip. Do not, under any circumstances, just drop this in oil or water. This does not need to be hardened and tempered. It needs to be used as is once it cools. Uh, the strength of the metal is going to come from the alloy. Because this is contacting hot stuff, you do not need to harden or temper it. That's going to be a bad, bad thing. So let it heat up. Let it cool in the air. Let it cool completely off. Then do your grinding, and you should be ready to go. Now, for the grinding I'm going to do on this guy, all I'm going to do is, just like with the other one, I'm going to clean up the sides of it, just make it nice and shiny, and then square the tip. I'll put a little bit of a bevel on the back side just for hammering purposes, and that should be our girl. Taking a look, you can see that she is dressed up, and she is, she is super, super shiny. Why is she super shiny? Because I thought it looked cool. No other reason. Now, you can see, again, we've got about a 3 sixteenths of an inch on that bottom right there. When you're doing yours, you can clean it up with a file. And the only port that you really need to make sure that's kind of clean and polished is going to be right there on the end. Because if it's got a bunch of gunk, a bunch of crap on there, when you drive it through, it's going to tend to hang. And if, now, if you're doing thin stuff like quarter of an inch, that shouldn't matter that much. But if you get into something like half inch or anything thicker, that's going to be a real problem. But... There she is. Should be uh, super, super, well, super simple. Super simple. I'm saying it simple. May not be simple, but I'm saying it. I'll heat up our inch and a quarter bar, and then we're going to do a test punch. Okay, now if you guys can see, we have a good hole right there. Now I can go to the back side, and you usually want to punch the back side at a red heat. This causes the plug to shear instead of tear. And you know what? Came loose. Now the plug's still in there. Uh, you can see it right there, but if I move over my hardy hole, just one second, let me do this off camera. Let me go tippy tap, tap, tap. Come on now, tap. And there you go. There's that nice hole all the way through. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you guys the difference in the tip of this guy and the tip of our mild steel piece. And that's going to require an extreme close-up. 
All right. So this is our high speed steel piece. This is our mild steel. And if you look at the mild steel punch, you can see that it's actually not flat anymore. This actually really ginked up on one side. And it looks like it's been really torn up. Whereas with this one, we've still got a nice square edge. And in fact, I think we've even got the sanding mark still on that end of it. Whereas this one has been completely obliterated. So that is the difference between the steels. Now, this one will eventually wear, uh, of course, it'll have to be dressed, but not nearly at the rate the mild steel uh, piece will. Sometimes having the right tool is only half the battle. The other half is having it out of the right material. This is one reason that I, I really hate a lot of the forums because when somebody asks, can I do this? There's a lot of answers. And the fact is, is you can use a mild steel punch. It's going to suck. You can use one that's tipped out of high speed steel and it's going to be pretty awesome. Both are going to do the same thing, but one's going to do it a lot easier than the other one. So this is one of the issues that I have when I'm doing videos because I get emails from a lot of you guys and every one of your situations is absolutely unique. So I'm trying to cover as much as I can. And if you haven't gotten my book, one of the things that I have to say over and over again is that it's not a matter of can you slam your wiener in the sliding glass door, it should you slam your wiener in the sliding glass door. If you have no other option, hey, go with mild steel. But if you've got some extra equipment, make something a little bit better. Now, the, this is actually a little bit more difficult than just finding the right type of material to make it out of. If you can find a CV axle, go down to your local mechanics shop. If they have an axle that comes out of the front of a front wheel drive car, it's usually about an inch in diameter. Makes great tools and punches like this. The problem is it's an inch thick. So you and your buddies are going to be hammering a hell of a long time to get it down to something that's into a usable form. It's work or it's complicated, whichever way you go, you've just got to be able to choose what's going to be right for you. Okay, good enough. Guys, thank you all so much for coming by and watching the videos. If Hey, if you found something out, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're in a position to actually help us out with the channel, come over to Patreon. You can make a, you can become a monthly supporter, get behind the scenes access, all that kind of good stuff. Outside of that, guys, thank you for watching and all of you be good.